Why howdy folks, welcome back to another video. First of all, let me just apologize because I have been gone off the YouTube, have not uploaded in like three or four weeks or something like that. But if my boat being this dirty is any indication, we just filmed a pretty cool little series of content that's gonna be coming out really soon. There's also a pretty major announcement gonna be made about the Green Goblin, the brand new boat, in that series. So make sure you guys are subscribed and you don't miss those videos. As far as today's video, it is long overdue. Since I've been living out here, I have been neighbors with quite possibly the most interesting and awesome neighbor I've ever had. And that's obviously neighbor Daryl. Over the last four years, I have learned so much from him and so much more about him. Suffice it to say, the dude is just an absolutely incredible story. For those of you that don't know, neighbor Daryl was actually a game warden in Northwest Florida for over 30 years. In addition to being a game warden for over 30 years, the dude's an outdoorsman. I mean, he's a hunter, he's a fisherman, he's a trapper. He's done literally everything that there is to be done in the outdoor realm. He's also become a fan favorite on the channel over the last three years. And I've seen the comment section, you guys absolutely love Neighbor Daryl, and I do too. I thought it would be really cool to look back over the last year, 2023, and just pinpoint all of the amazing and funny and awesome moments that Neighbor Daryl has given us and has been a part of. So I hope you folks are ready for just some of the most amazing Neighbor Daryl moments of 2023. Now, before we dive into that, guys, I want to remind you of something that's going on right now that you need to know about. The Guggen Squad is hosting our biggest event yet. It's actually an online tournament this month in March. There will be $30,000 worth of cash and prizes, and it's super easy to enter. All you have to do is buy a Guggen Squad product at any major retail store. So we're talking about Walmart, Academy, Shields, that kind of thing. Take a picture of your receipt and send that picture of the receipt to entry at guggensquad.com. Once you've done that, you're gonna get a reply email giving you all the instructions on how to use the Fishing Chaos online tournament system. Each angler will be judged on their best five fish caught and submitted, and the winner will be selected based on overall total length. Not really my strong suit, personally. Multiple winners are going to be selected, and don't worry, even if you guys don't have the biggest five fish limit, you're still gonna have the chance to win a ton of Guggen gear and other cash prizes. Now that we've got all that out of the way, let's take a look at some of Neighbor Daryl's most memorable moments of the past year. Hey, man. What's going on? Man, we got the TV hooked up. We figured out the air. Home. I see you brought your unicorn sleeping bag with you. I tried to get Andrew to stay in it, but he was like, eh. Uh, Hey, yeah, man, I said I wasn't against it. Right. Yeah. That's right. Bitch, how cold it is. That's exactly right. Yeah, but it's getting real cold. You and him both be in there. Magic box? That's the magic box. Get some of that stuff out. We got all these. Oh, that's some brownies there. I can't eat. <laughs> yes. Here's your coffee. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, man. Oh, oh with some homemade guacamole man. on top. Homemade guac on top? Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Man, we really got to build a table, man. We are slacking right We are now. slacking, dude. Jesus, look at that. I can't wait. Now, you're a big corner guy like myself. Oh, so yeah. That's the best piece. It's going to be a little messy, but lasagna is just kind of a messy food, you know? The last one he made was amazing. Just as good. I'm sure it is. If not better. Nowadays, I can't even keep track of when the last time Daryl blew my mind with food was. But right now, I can keep track. It was, it's right now. The guac edition, huge. I think he's got different kinds of meat in here. Yeah, like multiple different kinds? There's definitely some poultry. This, yeah. might, this might be like game bird, like dove or something with present. But also, is like dark meat, you know, like venison or something, I think. It's that wild turkey. As a matter of fact, the chewy pieces you get is that wild turkey is he's two years this old. This is what it's all about right here, boys. Oh, yeah. Dinner in the camp house. I didn't get it right. well, I'm going to have to try it. I've ate a lot of things. I wouldn't make a lasagna. Never... So some of the breakfast over here warming up, too, on the fire. That sausage. Yes, right here. Yeah, that's work of art. Say, Darryl, tell, show us the yes. good stuff here. It is a French toast casserole, and it's American. Oh. Red, white, and blue. Oh, my Lord. That's the most American thing I've ever seen for breakfast right there. There you go. I can't wait to tear it into that, man, with the coffee. It's better in the woods. I remember that from last year. The only thing that ain't better in the woods is taking a shit. I do like taking shit I'd have to agree with you on that one. That is the one thing that you'd rather not do outside. All right, we got to dig in here, man. We got to see some of the texture. And the only way to do that is to slice in. 
There's I can nothing. smell it though. You smell it? Oh, oh. yeah. It smells like um, IHOP. When you walk into IHOP, that's what IHOP smells like. Look at that texture right there. I mean, look at that. It's like a dessert for breakfast. And it actually has got natural maple. I use that natural Vermont maple syrup. I didn't no. use it. It's not that sugar syrup. Good God, good. man. Oh. Are you guys hungry yet? Just wait. It's gonna get way better than that. There's quite a few recipes in Daryl cooking on this little list of greatest Daryl moments of 2023. But this next moment probably takes the cake as far as the most satisfying video that he's been in. This next video, Daryl actually goes fishing and he cooks for us later on in the evening. But his fishing portion of this next video literally made the video. Good luck, Daryl. All right. Catch some fish, man. <clears throat> I won't dry. Need some for the rest of it. Nice brim there. Oh yeah. Follow the dad gum hook. Oh my god. So pretty. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Whoa, whoa, Joe! <laughs> whoa, Joe! <laughs> Don't get off. Don't get off. Oh yeah. Oh yeah! Ow. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Largemouth Bass on a brim hook. Bear out there, way out there to Digum Lake. I'm sitting here on the chair, enjoying himself. Oh yeah! Yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh shell cracker! Look at that. Look at that little red right there. Called a red ear sun, sunfish or a shell cracker, and they are the best brim to me. There is for eating. But all the fish seem to be right there in that one spot. That's crazy. Well, that's a pretty one. He swallowed it. They getting hungry. Might need to break out the old fly rod. And these are really good eating fish too. The old red-bellied sunfish. You can see how they get their name. They got the old red belly right there. And they're iridescent. If the sun was shining right there, it'd be beautiful. And he's got a old black flap, not like a bluegill, but he's another fine eating one right there. Bluegill's my least favorite. They're kind of strong. Well, can you tell me what's for dinner yet? Is it classified? Garlic store? farm chicken pasta. Oh my God. It's got everything. It's got all your vegetables. It's actually healthy. It's got spinach. Is that the one that you bake? Yeah. Oh, no, no, my... no, it's on the stove. Oh, I was about to say. There's one that he bakes that is yeah. just asinine. It yeah, doesn't even yeah, make I sense. Them. I can't Bar wait. We're going to have jalapeno sausage gravy. <laughs> I may have peeked in your box over here and seen the jalapeno gravy packets. And I was like, Two of them oh one of my. Yeah, just spicing it up a little bit. Yeah, and then I got jalapeno sausage that I made out of that deer. Is that deer? Yeah. All right, deer sausage yeah, for well, breakfast? Oh, right. jalapeno sausage. We were Aside from always cooking us delicious food and kind of just dropping knowledge on us as neighbor Daryl so eloquently does, another thing he loves to do is hang around and watch me do dumb stuff. He really enjoys that, I think. Partly because he never envisioned that he'd be living next door to a YouTuber, and also because I just think he likes watching me fail. Nope. Well, that strap's not tied to nothing, buddy. Okay, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. I forgot to do it. I, I don't have to move it far. Oh, oh dude. Yeah. Too easy. I wanna get Daryl's opinion on this motor. He might be taking a shower. Were you envisioning it? I might have been. How could you not? Daryl's house is the kind of place that'll have everything except what you're looking for. Here, let me show you the motor that we're about to mess with. Tell me if you think it's gonna work. Oh yeah, that'd be perfect for that little boat. I think it was $500 on Amazon. Yeah, yeah that'd be perfect for that little boat. <laughs> it's a little plastic prop though. I don't know yeah. how tough that thing's gonna be. You think it's gonna work? Yeah. The old Johnsons I had years ago, back in the 70s, had no Carter key. You better carry a bunch of them with you is out there. Really? If you hit anything at all, even like that grass, it'd shear that. A pin. That's why they send you extra prop and extra <laughs> everything because they know that's probably going to happen. So we can definitely take the boat. Oh, yeah. Yep. Transom's a little, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's about like our project boat transom when we tore that thing out. Yeah. But. but it is aluminum. Yeah, exactly. It's fine. And that motorboat, 
Hell yeah, we got the termites really working now. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> Famous last words. I'm gonna have to use a sock to plug the hole up. Hey man, the sock, that's one of the best boat plugs in the history of mankind, is just yeah. stuffing a sock down that's in it. That's right. I've done that so many times. And these directions are written like in such weird English, you can't even hardly understand it. No, here we go, here's a good one. After the outboard motor starting, low speed to revolve to prepare the heat three to five times, turn according to what need, adjust to the accelerator homogolous position. Yeah. What in the f is that? That's a perfect English right there. And what, what does that mean? I think it's a hang kai. Four horse, four T. Not sure what that means. Four turbos. Yeah, there you go. That's good for now. That way, if there's an explosion, we can control the size of it. You know. There's the problem. Let's go ahead and hit that four or five times. One, two. Oh yeah, I see fuel. I see fuel coming in. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, that's one of the basic things of a gas motor. Is you got to have fuel. <laughs> This next video clip is actually super exclusive because I don't even think this video is live on YouTube anymore. I'm pretty sure I made this video private because YouTube flagged it for some reason because it was a freaking squirrel hunting video. This is absolute peak neighbor Daryl. I mean, in his element with the shotgun in his hand. All I can say is sit back and enjoy. I want to put just three regular shots in it and I'm going to be good here. Ah, right, let's go here. Let me go check. Let's check. Oh, yeah. Woo! I don't know, Daryl. It's not a bad group right there. Uh, so that was Daryl's first, first one. First one, and this that was, was your second. I hope you guys admired Daryl's depiction of a squirrel on that box. <laughs> the, the drawing that he did was quite good. Let's see what the uh, old fella's up to. Is that my rifle right there, Daryl? No, yours didn't buggy. Oh, mine's already in there. Oh man, you're pull yours out, Daryl. Let's show off the uh, the weapons that we're using here. So I've got the 17 cal. That, I bought that already rigged like it was. Yeah. Right now here. this Ruger right here, I bought in 1976. That scope is an antique on there. Now what do you prefer prefer for squirrel hunting? The 17. You prefer the 17? It's got more range. Maxing out 50 yards with this. You're giving me a little bit of an advantage then with, yeah, the, with this got, rifle. You got a distance advantage. Got him. We did okay. shoot all these around my house because they get them a dang boat and shoot them wires up. Not only are we having a little competition in a squirrel fry later, but we're ridding Daryl's yard of problem oh, yeah, animals. It. Now it's personal. Well, Daryl, I got one pretty good shot and one not so good shot. Uh, fortunately, I got a, uh, a gut shot right there. <laughs> I don't know how I managed That's that. Good. I was one aiming at boy and one girl. pure head. Now this one's like a heart shot. I think I hit that one like in the heart. <laughs> What do you think? Two and 30 minutes. I mean, it's not too shabby on one no, leg. No, no, no. Well, the things that I'm getting later start, I might have to go to the shot ring. I think mine might be running shot. He just came flying off back here. Did you shoot him? Oh, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> I figured, I got thinking, I said, where would I hide that squirrel so I'd stay in that nod of shit right there? Daryl just shot into a tree just to get the squirrel to show himself and then blasted him out of said tree. He went flying somewhere right in here, I don't know. Here, are you trying to go back to your house or what? We can make a loop around the archer range. I definitely was hearing more like off to that side. Yeah, so. That's so funny because you just got yeah. done saying out of your mouth. Now I've never seen him back here. I'm like, no, there's one right there. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the opposite side on a branch. <laughs> Oh, got him, Daryl. Good <laughs> shooting, dude. That's <laughs> dude, he was in a full. On, oh, oh, he's, he's down there, Daryl. He's going down on that bottom. He's at the base of the tree. He's on the back side of it. You had to have shot him pretty good, though. Finish him, Daryl. Don't you let him get away. He's right on the back side of that tree, I thought. Where the heck did he go? He must have went up that tree. Oh, he's right here. You got him? Yeah, I got him. Oh, man. Yeah, I, knew I, hit that I, son of I thought he was gone. I, I thought he was well gone. I, I watched him crawl off. I, I, I should have shot at him again, but he was in that thick stuff. Well, I saw you blow him out of the tree the first Thank time. God, look at here, showing that ditch, how close he was. Yeah, I know. And if he had got down there, that's Ten a, more feet. Yeah, deep little gully right yeah, there. Yeah, that... put a, a rope on and let Andrew <laughs> rappel down there. <laughs> gotcha, buddy. Good squirrel, Sorry too. for your luck. Tied up now. 
Oh, there he went. I didn't miss him. I just wounded him. Dang, he's hard to kill. Oh, no. No! <laughs> Dang it. Man, how many shots does it take to kill a squirrel? <laughs> Did you find him? He fell on top of the roof there. Oh, he fell on the roof. Yeah, I gotta get the ladder. And he jumped up right here perfectly. Had to be a perfectly good shot. And the damn post was in the way. So I had to move. And you see me, and he run. And he got right here and had his head just sticking out right here. Uh, or maybe right there. Now, being a former law enforcement officer like Daryl was for decades, he's pretty good about keeping his composure. You know, staying calm, keeping cool. In the next video, though, is one of the few times I actually saw Daryl kind of have like a mini meltdown because of something done that he had done, which, you know, he, he's normally the guy doing the smart stuff. I'm normally the one doing the dumb stuff. But in this clip, we realize that even neighbor Daryl is human. The biggest catfish I've ever caught out of here was just the other, about where they bolts on the other side of that bridge. He's probably 30 plus pounds. We caught over 900 pounds of catfish in three days. Good God. So now what are we looking for here? About 10 foot water depth there? I'm, 10, looking, 12? I'm looking for the, the uh, actual channel itself. Yeah. I want to get right on the edge of the channel and then we'll put that trolling motor down. And... So... I've never even heard of marshmallow fish until I seen your video. <laughs> but I have caught fish off of shrimp. So I know for a fact shrimp will work. I know for a fact fish, I mean shrimp will work. But I, I still have my doubt about marshmallows. Uh oh, oh that, that's got a fish on. Fish on. On the marshmallow, Daryl. Oh, on the marshmallow. I watched it happen. Oh, I got a fish. No, that's a fish. <laughs> oh, there we go. He's fighting now. Oh, there we go. We got some dinner or lunch or whatever. Oh, my damn. <laughs> on the marshmallow, Daryl. It could be the side of the boat you're on, too. <laughs> I believe that's one to nothing. Marshmallow right there. That could just be pure ass Lojo luck too. I do have some good luck. They call me Lucky Lojo sometimes. I'm little everything. Vienna sausages, bacon, hot dogs, <laughs> beef, deer, every kind of gizzard and lizard ever made. Only in you follow you catch them with marshmallow. But that wasn't there all the stuff. Whoa! Whoa! Uh -huh, hey, you're on. Is, you got a fish? What is he? Oh, it was huge, Daryl. Oh, he's still on there. He was huge. I shit the fuck. Oh. oh, that's that light ass line, you dumb mother. Son of a bitch. I thought it was that. I thought it was braided line. Daryl, that fish was like this long. <laughs> that was a huge fish. Ah, I was horsing him. Yeah, you oh, were. I thought it was that damn braided line right there. I thought you were snagged because of how you oh, were just no. holding it. That was a freaking huge uh, no. fish. And off this light rod. Oh, on the shrimp. Fish was oh! That was right behind the boat too. Uh, eight pound, pound freaking test line. Oh. <laughs> For that fish, that was very light. Wow, that fish saw the boat and like kicked and rolled one time and that line just snapped. I, I was thinking I had braided line. Yeah. I was going, because I was fixing to have to try to do something with that rod there. Man. That was a crappie reel I put on this <laughs> rod to add up to a, that was a game changer too. Yes, it was. I that mean, was a monster. I mean, throw their marshmallows away after seeing that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You're sabotaging yourself today, Daryl. Shoot myself in the foot. Good thing we ain't hunting. <laughs> good 16-inch fish. You know a couple pounds. Whoever caught that fish must have been using really good bait. I bet he was. Probably some kind of newfangled stuff just come out. Now, Daryl, when you used to do these game warden shore lunches, I mean, I'm sure as far as, you know, what you eat, it's what you can catch, what you have packed in your boat. Yeah, right. we had a little box, kind of like some of in my truck. Have utensils in it, paper plates, that kind of stuff, salt, pepper. Just kept it fairly simple. But we always carried a bag of charcoal in a Ziploc bag, charcoal lighter. One of these grills like this here and did stick this over that hole in the ground and that would be your, your cooking utensil. You know, fry oysters and shrimp, fish. You can boil stuff like I'm gonna do, bake like grits or something. Um, or you can use like we use a lot for just hot dogs, hamburgers, that kind of stuff. A lot of times we'd be out there all day. You can't go off the river, ain't no way to place to eat. 
Lisbon River. Yeah. So you either brought a lunch with you or you caught it. If we're gonna stay all day, we'd normally try to catch. We'd set out some bush hooks, catch some catfish too, you know. So while you're out working the water, you've got bush hooks set up back in this <laughs> yeah. creek for supper or for lunch yeah. or whatever. Yeah, most times wow. supper. Because a lot of times we work at night. Yeah. So we'd go out there and set out eight or 10 bush hooks on the way to where we're going. Mm -hmm. And then we'd come back and check them. You know, all we need is one or two catfish. Got the fish in there. Got a slow sear going on. You know, like I throw some sausage in there, some bacon in there, mm. along with the fish, uh, some onion in there. Nice. So you can add whatever you want to add. Yeah, yeah. You know. Oops, that should be about two cups. So wait, you're gonna boil the grits in the seafood broth? In the, the seafood broth? and the chicken broth. Yeah. Oh, dude. Bang. Game changer, didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's, yeah, cause you gotta think them box dinners, they do it good, but they do it for millions of people. Right. Taste of buzz. So you always gotta personalize your, your own. All right, grits. And some cheese. Cheese. Whatever much cheese you want. I think and that's then, good. Yeah, whatever. Some whatever. of the meat concoction. The meat concoction. Which can fish consist of marshmallow flavored catfish. I am excited. That's for sure. I've already had a little bite of that sausage. I mean, it's seasoned so well with yeah, that uh, raging Cajun seasoning. God, it's so good. Yeah, I feel like I have earned this meal. We, we all have. Might be one of the best things you've ever made, Daryl. I've said that like 10 times, but I mean, what do you think? This oh, is like a top three all time. Oh, for sure. No Daryl's also been an incredible help around the property that I had purchased across the street from me. You know, over 270 acres, I had never owned land like that before. Daryl was so helpful. I can't even tell you how many times that man bailed me out of a jam or gave me a helpful idea to help me solve a problem that I had just no idea what to do. Needless to say, I would have never even purchased that property unless Daryl lived here because he's just been that instrumental. And this next clip is a great example of that. There you go, right there. Oh, there we go. Oh, you hear it? Now it's hissing harder. Mm -hmm. So we gotta be, we gotta be striking a nerve right there. How's it looking over there? Still, full, still flowing? Oh. You think I'm just, I just... think there's some tie-dye roots in there, and I think you busted through a root and poked the hole through the roots. Wow, it's so much deeper underneath. It's probably starting a little sinkhole. Yeah. I can't even touch right there, wow. dude. This says I better be careful. Get sucked yeah, down this culvert. Yeah, three foot. <laughs> Man, well, it is. Hook wish to you. Holy moly! It's deep right where this is sticking in the ground. It's like it just. Yeah. It's starting to. Them roots, probably all them roots of that mud got in there just compacted it. You know, just... Oh, there it goes. It's because I'm wiggling it around, man. Oh, it's it's rushing now, buddy. Really? Yeah, yeah I it's see coming this. now, dude. You whitewater wrap that. Wow. Down the trees, get some muddy water. Yeah. You know, if you was down, if you was fishing down the creek about a half mile, all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. like, what in the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is frickin'. I can hear it. Look at that, dude. <laughs> Four foot. That's pretty deep right there. <laughs> Yeah. There's the pipe. Ow. That's a metal pipe to the neck. Oh, Look at that stick go down. Get twisted down that whirlpool. That's wild. <laughs> I mean, it's long. I heard it burp. Just did something. Yeah, right. it's, yep, yep. Definitely, definitely doing yep, something. It's coming out now. Keep doing what you I heard a big old Look, look at the, the big pipe. It's completely underwater. Yeah. Can you see the big pipe now? Oh yeah, the about to suck me into it. <laughs> it's creating another whirlpool right here. <laughs> yeah. Holy. We heard it. I think you say <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked down below my feet and it was starting to go shh, 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 like a toilet had been flushed on me. Yeah, There's another one. Oh wow. It's They're both just pulling in all the water and sediment. Yeah. Look, it's pulling everything. Awesome. You're gonna pull up on a random spot on your property that's just gonna be underwater. Just floated, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If I've learned anything about property management from this man and from everybody, <laughs> it's if it ain't one thing, it's something else. It's yep. Yeah, so I told you I wasn't going to narrate every single clip. I, I'm sorry. I like to talk. But I'm not going to narrate the next few. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the essence of Neighbor Daryl. Getting the pond ready? I'm getting ready to get it birdied up. You got a stick behind you, Daryl. Well, I stuck on the tractor, I think. Probably. Man, I can tell you've been in it this morning, Daryl. <laughs> oh, catfish, fish. Catfish. 
Today, baby, we're eating, Dale. We're eating. That's a skinny freaking catfish, my guy. Yeah, yeah. Look at how skinny. He's barely gonna be able to feed anybody. Barely. I like that shirt on you, Dale. Yeah, put it on for your video. True to the brand. You gotta, you gotta appreciate that about a man. And that baby blue, I mean, that is just oh, yeah, on Daryl. Really brings yeah, out, right. brings out the eye color a little bit. Jamaican jerked catfish tacos. I'm excited. I mean, come on. Everything about that sentence is just chow chow right there. If you're a big chow chow in your taco person, I may try that. Avocado mixed with sour cream? Or yes. Yeah. yeah. Some cilantro and then those poblano peppers that he's about to grill up. I mean, so no matter how the fish turn out, I mean, the taco itself is going to be pretty dynamite. These tacos are about to be fire. You know, I like the sauce first. I like the sauce to be on the tortilla, not on the meat. I want my sauce too. And then I put, I like cheese. You put cheese on first, you can't get sauce in there right. Right, correct. That's why you put sauce on before you put your cheese on your pizza. That's a lot of cilantro. Yeah. I like cilantro though. Big cilantro guy. Man, this this fish is falling apart. So I, I know, that's that bass. If they tell, that's why I wasn't crazy about the bass, because it falls apart on you. Well, that's okay. That just means it's tender to me. Yep, cheese next. You taking notes, Andrew? I am taking notes. Are you plotting your, your first move? Well, I'm just going to do everything on mine. I want to be able to eat somewhere else. It's also a man-sized taco right here. Dude, put the camera down right now. <laughs> Make a taco. Do exactly what I just did. Set your taste buds free, okay? I will let them, do that. Let them go free for a ride, okay? I can't wait. Oh my God. Caribbean jerk catfish tacos. Only the best here at Daryl's house. I'm gonna drag backwards if you can just kind of follow me with that piece. <laughs> oh Daryl, this is this is a hell of an operation we got going on here. Yeah, it is. Okay. Now that's probably gonna leak a touch. I know it's going downhill pretty good. Give me that piece. Just pull that way, then you can tie it on off, not off on it, way. Okay, hell yeah. We'll get a pipe in there and off bridge it where we need it. Okay, that is some serious redneck ingenuity and I like it. Oh man, I think it stopped completely. Look at that. We have harnessed the power of the creek and rerouted it in a completely different way this time. Thank oh, Jenny, be proud of you. Country boy can survive. That's what he said. You know what, I, I see what it is. What? The water level out here is the same as the water level out uh, Ah, damn it. Well, this pond, it's always one step forward, two steps back. You think if we put if we put the other liner on top of this one, put everything in place, and then once that one fills up, do you think the pressure of that would then push this remaining water out that hole right there? I think it will. Maybe. It's gonna have pressure on it. Yeah, it? have a ton of pressure right. once it's full. Yeah, it's kind of like you fill a bathtub up at the very top, then you sit in it. That water yeah. got to go somewhere. It's coming out. Dude, how does the pond look bigger now? <laughs> I think they've sloped inside. I feel like we're getting close. See, now that's probably pretty close. When you and when you're not sure, you just take this mm -hmm. and just, just dip it in. So yeah, it's not quite just hot enough. another second, but you had to ruin the fish. They just got the very tail of it. Otherwise, you got grease on the whole thing. Just we'll look at it when it goes in. You can tell. Oh yeah, that's ready. That's ready. Yeah, that's right. Just yeah, I did two at a time. See so how it's bubbling, sizzling, and it's not smoking, smoking. Yeah, if that grease is too hot, you can smell it right away. As soon as yeah. it hits, you can smell that cornmeal burn. It's already firming up, son, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's, uh, that's crispy right there. Push that on that and get them all in the grease. That's a firmer fish. I said, bass is one of my favorite freshwater fish to eat. I never knew people ate bass like that. When I first started bass fishing, yeah. I was always catching well, release. Because you grew up in a generation of catch and release. Right. When I grew up, when I was when I was 
well, even your age, nobody caught her. It was just starting to come around, and yeah. catch and release was for liars. Because I'd go out there fishing, me and you, and I'd come back and say, boy, I caught 19 big old bass to turn them all loose. Right. Well, you come back, you're eating yours, so you got every fish you catch. Well, catch and release first started out as a liar's club. Hey, y'all, we're back. We are back. Got, oh, God, my bag's ripping. We're back with our black bag, changed out of our wet clothes. The weather got wild. I've been sitting on the back of the buggy. Yeah, with Andrew. With Andrew. Got yeah. So. Oh, <laughs> All right, this is a, actually it was an internet sensation last year. It's called, they call it Mississippi Pot Roast. And there's like five basic ingredients. I add the garlic. Now, not everybody adds garlic. The, the original recipe didn't have garlic, take it out. And a stick of butter, which is outside. All you do is you put your, and you don't have to, to sear it. You can, and uh, but you don't have to. You stick that in. You take a whole jar of Greek peppers, them pepper seed peppers, and you put a half the juice in or all the juice. Now I like all the juice. The more juice you get, the hotter it's gonna get. You have to run here. You yeah. pour the whole. We want all the juice. Yeah, we want, yep. we want everything. And then peppers are mild. Then you get a pack of all juice, the all juice gravy mix. It's just dry gravy. Some of the side. And then a pack of Hidden Valley Ranch, ranch seasoning. seasoning. I've made pot roast my whole life, but I've never put ranch in it. Or raw jus, or Greek peppers. God, that smells so good. Oh, dude. It this does. Be Just cover this up, I'll put a stick of butter on top, and we'll cook it for an hour or two. And I add, now this makes an Alabama pot roast. I add potatoes and carrots. Well, you got to. You can add celery. Dude, smell that. Oh, yeah. Smell it. Is this gonna support this heavy jumper? That's big and find out. That's good. <laughs> big and find out. If oh, I cheat, this is awesome. Slide her up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What if you that? went on a survival trip, now you want like some garlic bread or some dinner rolls where you can sop up that old gravy. It's gonna yep. Uh huh. It's shredded. Haters. Take a look at the final product that lids on. Oh there. man, that's piping hot. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy. I hope the taters got done. Moly. Dude, look at that. It looks so good. Well, there's, and you talk about plenty. We've got to invent smell-o-vision so people can smell. No kidding. Through the video. Oh my gosh. And that's a unique, if people's never had that with that pepper, it's a unique flavor. I mean, yeah. When I first had it, I was blown away. Dude, let's just get a real live, uncut taste test here. Dear Lord. First of all, the meat's like crazy tender. All right, Daryl. All right. That is amazing. I bet. Oh my God. It's gonna be better if you had an old, uh, an old roll sop up all that juice with. God, it's so good. The pepperoncini and the juice adds so it much. It does. It's almost like a spice, but it's not spicy. And I don't taste the ranch seasoning really at all either. Let's check these potatoes, see how they look like they're perfectly done. Oh my God, how hot. That pork turned out so good. Got slow cooking it like that, mm -hmm. over that, that medium heat, I guess you'd say. This was a pretty low maintenance meal. I mean, oh, you yeah. just dump everything Ideally, in Ideally, if you had charcoal, you just throw two or three charcoal for catching there every 15, 20 minutes. I mean, who would have think five ingredients turn out like this? Yeah. Call it clove? Uh, two whole cloves. Yeah. Probably could have used. Yeah, I like garlic. I love garlic. Who doesn't like garlic? I mean, Jesus. But, uh... All right, Daryl, walk me through what we got going on here. This is the tender one off that hog y'all killed. I cut it in three pieces, and I got two teriyaki, because that's what you said you like. And I done one, I've never had this experiment. It's, it's garlic and different kind of Italian herbs and stuff. And I'm gonna have that. I've had the teriyaki, but I just wanna see what that tastes like. And, uh, oh yeah. There we go. It smells so dang good too. Oh, the tenderness is definitely there. Oh, there? That's what I was worried about. I thought, no, I mean, it took it about two hours. It's pretty it dang tender. Cause you really want to get about 200 to break it down. It was like 170 when I checked it. I mean, I, I just tore that piece off pretty yeah. good. I mean. I'm just going in, Andrew. Do it. God, that smells so hard, good. Mmm. Damn, my teriyaki is good. Oh, there's a piece of tinfoil I almost ate. Mmm. Mm -hmm. God, that's good. That was a perfect size hog. Perfect. It was. It perfect. It really was. 
you can tell now that I've eaten a few different wild hogs of different sizes, that 50 pound range is definitely where yep. you want to be. So that one is a garlic. This is garlic, Italian herbs, hotter than a son of a bitch. Gosh. Grab me a piece of it and try that and try the difference there. I don't mind if I do. Garlic parm in there. Grab a piece of that cameraman with your fingers there. Good Lord. That might be the best one, honestly. Hmm. Although I love teriyaki, but they're both, honestly, exceptional. Hey, hey. Well, I think we did you proud. Oh, I don't think I'll be all night, that's all night playing catfish. Well, look, I will tell you this. We had some absolute giants on today. Did sure we? did, yeah. Some giants. <laughs> what do you about that? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect for eating right there. Definitely unimpressed. <laughs> there we hooked into some of the biggest gar. Oh. I'm talking about gar that were like Huge. that big around, like four or five footers. Look at that alligator gar? Yeah, well maybe. They have the big old long yeah, alligator face? A couple of them were huge. Mm -hmm. I bet they're alligator gar. I mean, bigger than I've ever seen. What are you making, Daryl? We'll make some Cajun blackened alfredo. Ooh. Make it kind of garlicky <laughs> and spicy. Anytime you mention the word blackened, and then fish, and then alfredo, I am in, in, in. Oh yeah. Got my little baby play nice there. Let's find my big one. Oh uh, yeah. I damn forgot got hot earlier. I thought that was a perfect fillet size. That right is. There. That you know, because he well not super and he's long. meaty. Yeah. Look how fat he is. That's a meaty fish. Dang right. Daryl, what would you have done? if we brought like a giant gar back. <laughs> you know. <laughs> have you ever cleaned a gar before? I haven't, but I watched the boys clean them and they used to eat them. They said they were real good on Chuck Hatch River. They cleaned them with, uh, they, they cut them with tin stick down their, their scales. Yeah, yeah. Peeled it back and then they just took like the tenderloins off of them. Really? Yeah. They said they were real good, but you know, boys in Northwest Florida eat anything. Can you edit this to where it looks like I cooked it? I'll try my best. Okay. The Alfredo that Daryl makes is already one of my absolute favorite things. Got our pieces of blackened catfish right there. Got the pasta, got the sauce. I mean, God, it smells so good. After hours of fishing and grinding on the river by the dam, this is what it's all about right here, folks. I'm just going for it. So rip that in your beard there. Mm-hmm, flavor for later. Guys, the Alfredo's dynamite. The fish is amazing. That blackened's got a little bit of extra spice along with the red pepper. Fish is pretty good. Yeah. It's a catfish, it's a river catfish. Not real muddy tasting. Mm. Oh my God. Look at that. It looks great. I can't wait. So there you have it, folks. That is my tribute to the man that they call neighbor Daryl. One hell of a guy is all I can say. Now he's been on the channel for many years, so that was just the last 10 clips that I could find from 2023. If I went back even further, there's probably 50 clips of him just being awesome. But I think that'll do just enough for today. Smash that thumbs up button if you guys liked it. I know you did, because a bunch of you have been waiting for it, a bunch of you asked for it. Well, there you go. A big sincere thank you from myself to neighbor Daryl. That's really what this video was about for me, is just kind of paying tribute to him and how awesome he has been for me, for my family, and for the channel. Folks, be looking out for the new videos with the Green Goblin. We took this thing on a Florida trip, a send, if you will, and there was some large creatures caught 
in this boat. So hopefully you guys are subscribed. You're not gonna want to miss that series because I have a huge announcement about the Green Goblin that you guys are gonna wanna know about. Remember that Guggen Squad online tournament. We are hosting that. It's happening right now in March. Make sure you guys are getting in on that. Folks, I love you. Thank you for sticking around another year. This is going to be one of the best years on the channel. We're gonna have some amazing adventures together. Looking forward to it. See you guys next time. I'm out.